The Present Crisis by James Russell Lowell Read for LibriVox.org by Alison Valdes When a deed is done for freedom Through the broad earth's aching breast Runs a thrill of joy prophetic Trembling on from east to west And the slave, where'er he cowers Feels the soul within him climb To the awful verge of manhood as the energy sublime of the century bursts full blossom on the thorny stem of time. Through the walls of hut and palace shoots the instantaneous throe, when the travail of the ages rings earth's systems to and fro. At the birth of each new era, with a recognizing start, nation wildly looks at nation, standing with mute lips apart, and glad truth's yet mightier man-child leaps beneath the future's heart. So the evil's triumph sendeth with a terror and a chill, under continent to continent, the sense of coming ill, and the slave, where'er he cowers, feels his sympathies with God, in hot tear-drops ebbing earthward to be drunk up by the sod, till a corpse crawls round unburied, delving in the nobler clod. For mankind are one in spirit, and an instinct bears along, round the earth's electric circle, the swift flash of right or wrong, whether conscious or unconscious, yet humanity's vast frame, through its ocean-sundered fibres feels the gush of joy or shame, in the gain or loss of one race all, the rest have equal claim. Once to every man and nation comes the moment to decide, in the strife of truth with falsehood for the good or evil side, some great cause, God's new Messiah, offering each the bloom or blight, parts the goats upon the left hand and the sheep upon the right, and the choice goes on for ever twixt that darkness and that light. Hast thou chosen, O my people, on whose party thou shalt stand, ere the doom from its worn sandals shakes the dust against our land? Though the cause of evil prosper, yet tis truth alone is strong, and albeit she wander outcast now, I see her around her throng, troops of beautiful tall angels, to enshield her from all wrong. Backward look across the ages, and the beacon moments see, that, like peaks of some sunk continent, jut through oblivion's sea, not an ear in court or market for the low foreboding cry of those crises, God's stern winnowers, from whose feet earth's chaff must fly, never shows the choice momentous till the judgment hath passed by. Careless seems the great avenger, history's pages but record one death grapple in the darkness twixt old systems and the word, truth forever on the scaffold, wrong forever on the throne. Yet the scaffold sways the future, and behind the dim unknown standeth God within the shadow, keeping watch above his own. We see dimly in the present what is small and what is great. Slow of faith, how weak an arm may turn the iron helm of fate, but the soul is still oracular amid the market's din. This the ominous stern whisper from the Delphic cave within, They enslave their children's children, who make compromise with sin. Slavery, the earth-born cyclops, fellest of the giant brood, Sons of brutish force and darkness, who have drenched the earth with blood, Famished in his self-made desert, blinded by our purer day, Gropes in yet unblasted regions for his miserable prey, Shall we guide his gory fingers where our helpless children play? Then to side with truth is noble when we share her wretched crust, Ere her cause bring fame and profit, and tis prosperous to be just. Then it is the brave man chooses, while the coward stands aside, Doubting in his abject spirit, till his lord is crucified, And the multitude make virtue of the faith they had denied. Count me o'er the earth's chosen heroes, they were souls that stood alone, while the men they agonized for hurled the contumelious stone, stood serene, and down the future saw the golden beam incline to the side of perfect justice, mastered by their faith divine, 
by one man's plain truth to manhood and to God's supreme design. By the light of burning heretics, Christ's bleeding feet I track, toiling up new Calvaries ever with the cross that turns not back. And these mounts of anguish number how each generation learned one new word of that grand credo which in prophet hearts hath burned since the first man stood God conquered with his face to heaven upturned. For humanity sweeps onward where to day the martyr stands, on the morrow crouches Judas with the silver in his hands. Far in front the cross stands ready, and the crackling faggots burn, while the hooting mob of yesterday in silent awe return to glean up the scattered ashes into history's golden urn. Tis as easy to be heroes as to sit the idle slaves of a legendary virtue carved upon our fathers' graves. Worshippers of light ancestral make the present light a crime. Was the Mayflower launched by cowards? steered by men behind their time turn those tracks toward past or future that make plymouth rock sublime they were men of present valour stalwart old iconoclasts unconvinced by axe or gibbet that all virtue was the past's but we made their truth our falsehood thinking that hath made us free hoarding it in mouldy parchments while our tender spirits flee the rude grasp of that great impulse which drove them across the sea. They have rights who dare maintain them. We are traitors to our sires, smothering in their holy ashes freedom's new-lit altar-fires. Shall we make their creed our jailer? Shall we, in our haste to slay, from the tombs of the old prophets, steal the funeral lamps away, to light up the martyr faggots round the prophets of to-day? New occasions teach new duties. Time makes ancient good uncouth. They must upward still, and onward, who would keep abreast of truth. Lo, before us gleam her campfires. We ourselves must pilgrims be, Launch our Mayflower, and steer boldly through the desperate winter sea, nor attempt the future's portal with the past's blood-rusted key. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.